Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Malum, a diabolical magic mod with new tools, weapons, armor, spirits, alchemical transmutations, and more. First and foremost, let's talk about world gen. You may find one of these, a rune wood tree, out in the world. No, it will not be on a little tiny floating sky island like this, but you will likely find it out in the world somewhere. Feel free to harvest it as you desire. Taking an axe to any of these things and stripping the logs doesn't really do too much until you get to this, an exposed runewood log section. This will then expose a little bit more, revealed runewood log. Get yourself a bottle, click on this new revealed section, and you'll get a bit of holy sap. It has multiple uses. For one, you can combine it with a single slime ball to turn it into three holy sap balls, which then can also be used in the same recipes as a slime ball could be in most vanilla Minecraft, thus tripling your slime output. But if you smelt it up, that holy sap will turn into holy syrup, which will give you some pretty good food effects as well as a regenerative and a potentially effect removing option. Like if you're poisoned, it might help remove some of that, like milk would. I should mention, if you take any of this runewood logs and smelt it in a furnace, it will turn into arcane charcoal. Using this as regular fuel, it will smelt 16 items at a time, so it already has at least a pretty good benefit with that alone. This mod also adds fragments, or tiny versions of those items. You can turn arcane charcoal into eight pieces. You can turn coal, charcoal, and something called blazing quartz fragments into smaller bits, which then can be used to smell one or two items, depending upon which item it is, allowing you to also save and spare your uh, coal reserves from running out. Besides finding a random lone tree out in the world, there are other options, and those are below the earth. You will likely find some soul stone ore, whether it be in regular or deep slate variants, you may find some. On top of that, you might also find occasional brilliant stone options. Now, you're probably going to want these just for the XP that you could get from them. Mining them up, you end up getting this, a brilliance cluster. Grabbing that, you can use it to smelt it into brilliance chunks. Take those brilliance chunks and either make yourself a decorative block of brilliance or put it in a bottle for a bottle of O enchanting. The soul stone ore, though, that is pretty much your bread and butter of this mod. It's going to be your entry or gateway into getting into a lot of the stuff as well as the, the rune wood trees that you're going to need. Mining these up, you're going to want to smelt them. They will turn into soul stone clusters, which on their own are pretty well useless, but they will smelt up just like most new Minecraft ores into two pieces of processed soul stone. Taking that processed soul stone, combining it with a few iron ingots and a couple sticks, you'll get your next most important tool of this entire mod, and that is a crude scythe. A good starting point and a good starting weapon. A crude scythe is about as good as an iron sword. Using it on a foe of your choice, you can get some soul crystals, or spirits, as they're called in this mod, to generate. These are examples of the different spirits that you'd see fracture from those creatures upon killing them with one of these scythes or any number of the weapons or tools this mod introduces. Using regular vanilla gear or other mods will not produce these spirits that you're going to be needing. They come in eight different varieties, and different mobs drop different spirits. That's not all though. Having a scythe, it has a sweeping edge effect that can be used on multiple mobs together, and it will actually distribute the damage quite well as if a sweeping edge enchantment was already on the tool. Looking at the three new enchantments that are added by this mod, they can mostly only be used by the scythe, but some of the weapons and tools in the mod may also take advantage of these enchantments. To start with, we've got Haunted. There are up to two levels of that. That pretty much just increases the amount of soul damage that you do to the target. Then you've got Spirit Plunder, and as you kill a mob, you get more spirits dropping from it, though it will likely be at the cost of a bit more durability loss of your weapon. And the third one, and probably my favorite, is Rebound. has up to three levels of it, and depending upon the level is how fast this will recharge. You can throw your scythe, and kill up to multiple enemies at a time. Now, how would I know to have done any of this or anything about this mod in general? Well, it's pretty much going to be brought to you by this, your Encyclopedia Arcana. You just take your processed soul stone, combine it with a book, and voila, you have your encyclopedia. 
When you first open it up, you can start with your introduction and move up towards the center, which is going to be your spirit infusion. So let's start with the spirit infusion as the next part. It will require some rune wood, gold ingots, and some processed soul stone, but placing one of these things down in the world, you just take you any spirit that you want and click on it, and it will start rotating around it. Just be sure that whatever ritual you want to go forward with, you only have those spirits surrounding this that you need. You don't have to have exact quantities. You can actually have the amount required for the ritual or more. Just know that if you do the next ritual, you may have some leftovers spinning around this thing that you may not want on there that uh, uh, the next ritual might not need. So in this case, I'm putting an arcane spirit on our spirit altar. Then I'm following it up by adding in an item, gunpowder. With this, it'll slowly infuse the gunpowder. and make Hex Ash. Hex Ash is going to be used for a lot of your spirit altar recipes, so you're going to want to have a decent amount of this on hand, if at all possible. But there are item pedestals, as well as item stands, that you can use for uh, the rest of the rituals that this spirit altar might have. Now they come in all different shapes and sizes, you know, from soul wood to rune wood. Over here I've got some twisted rock and so on. There's plenty of different options for you, but basically if it can hold an item, then it can be used for this. You're going to want to keep things within four blocks of your spirit altar for it to actually take effect. And the next thing we're going to cover is going to be totem magic. To get into that, you need to be able to make runewood totem bases. And to understand this image that it currently is showing you for how to start with these totems, is this is all of the crystals you're going to need to have hovering around your spirit altar. This is the item you're going to need to have on top of your spirit altar. And these are going to need to be on some of your stands or displays that you have surrounding it. This will be your output. And there we have it. They start spinning around the spirit altar. Nothing really fancy. Well, okay, yeah, it is pretty fancy, and I love it. But if I take one runewood log and I place it on top, they gather at the top. This implies that it recognizes a ritual is trying to be made, so it's actively searching nearby pedestals for any kind of other ingredients. Now in this case, I also need some hex ash and some runewood planks. Again, I just need to have the minimum amount for it to be able to craft these in these item pedestals. So let's put these here and those there, and that should work. Now. You'll notice it starts working when you see things like that happening with these. With these, If you have the exact amounts on here, the items will completely disappear and be used up. As I've got too many already on here, it's leaving the leftovers on the pedestals. And once it's done, it shoots the resulting item off of the top. Now these Runewood Totem bases, they're similar to miniature beacons uh, from vanilla Minecraft that you can set down on the ground. You're going to want to top them with just a bunch of Runewood to start with. And if you look up top in your encyclopedia, you'll notice all these different rites that are in here. These are examples of all the different rites that you can perform with your totem. And they have variations on each and every one of them. So let's start with this one, the aerial rite. Clicking on this, it gives an example of what it looks like. You've got your base plus five logs. You'll also notice that it says here, rite effect corrupted right effect. And when I go to the next page, it says right effect and corrupted right effect. So let's look at the first one, a right effect. The aerial right provides one of many auras. Nearby players will receive a boost to movement speed. I need to take two aerial spirits and an arcane spirit. All right, starting at the bottom, I have the arcane and then I have two air spirits. And that's pretty much it. In order to get it to activate, you then click on the totem base. And you notice there that I now have Aerial Aura 2, and I have a speed buff going on, as long as this thing is working. If you want to turn it off, just right click, and it disables it, and your effect will slowly fade away. But you can also re-enable it whenever you like. It's reusable. Now that is an example of a regular right. Let's go to the next page. This one here is an advanced right effect. It adds an Eldritch Spirit plus those previous two. The right is twisted into something greater. Nearby blocks will start to experience gravity. So in this case, I don't want these here because I need to have that one eldritch one a little bit below this. In order to remove the spirits from the runewood logs, just right click with an axe as if you're stripping it. You don't get those back. 
they're gone. All right, let's go with the advanced version of this and then turn it on. Wonderful, but I don't see anything happening nearby. Well, in this case, it's a little bit simpler than what it might reveal here. Let's take out this dirt block here. And you'll notice that the block here just automatically fell as if it was affected by gravity. This actually affects the, uh, the circle, uh, <laughs> forgive me, a hollowed out square around the Runewood Totem base, one block below it. It won't affect anything else below that or otherwise, but it can be used for different kinds of automations. All right, so I did mention corrupted rights and how there's two different ones of that for this same aerial right. Well, how would I do that? In this case, the arcane right. This allows you to basically change how this entire thing works. Uh, allows you access to two more by changing the wood type that it all uses. By using five arcane spirits on your totem and then activating it, it will change from rune wood into soul wood. While your soul wood logs are currently active and before you end up doing any other items, you may just want to dig down one level and place some kind of rune wood plank or log or otherwise, and it will convert them into as much soul wood as you could potentially need, thus no longer needing to, well, have to go through a crafting ritual in order to make more. And of course, you can always strip these out and use this soul wood for other things. But before doing so, you can always look at the corrupted right effect. The effect of the right is altered. Horizontal mobility turns into vertical agility. So if I do the same one before that gave me a speed bonus with two aerial and one arcane, I now have corrupted aerial aura two, which allows me a really big and slow moving jump effect. And then of course, by adding an eldritch spirit to that, you can do a really super jump that, well, can result in extremely high jumps that you'll probably not survive the end of. Now there are a ton of options. I showed you four options just from the first aerial right and two from the arcane right. Each one of these other ones will have four more additional options. I won't be covering all of those as they're just different combinations of them, but there are plenty of ways of automating, smelting, creating more animals, and other options of even harvesting creatures for spirits as well. But enough about totems, let's get into spirit metallurgy, which has a lot of options in it, both for offense and defense. Some of the required ingredients you're going to be needing will be hallowed gold, as well as hallowed spirit resonators. Hallowed gold is just some sacred spirits and ar one arcane spirit clicked on the spirit infuser, a gold ingot on top of that, and then on some of the surrounding pedestals, nether quartz, and processed soul stone. All that will get you one hallowed gold ingot. Another item that can be used for different recipes is going to be a hallowed spirit resonator, which is just more of those combined together. And to give you a small example of what one of these hallowed gold ingots can do, it can make a spirit jar just on a regular crafting table with some glass panes. A spirit jar are these lovely things back here. Besides just being a great addition or a way of just displaying your kills, I guess, you can use it to store your different gem types. It can hold quite a bit in here and just by right clicking you'll get one out. By sneak right clicking you'll get an entire stack of them out. In this case that's how much I had in there. The other metal type that you're going to need to learn how to make is soul stained steel. This is made with one wicked spirit and arcane spirit clicked on your spirit altar, one iron ingot sitting on top of that, and then a couple soul sand and process soul stone on each of the different stands surrounding it. This should get you soul stained steel ingots. Again, you've got stained spirit resonators, which may be used for other recipes later. Combining them with some simple sticks, you can make some good tools. Now these are going to be slightly better than iron and a heck of a lot more durable. You'll be able to get a lot of different things from these. Now keeping that in mind, it is slightly better than iron for an example of the soul stained steel sword, but any of these soul stained tools, if used to kill a creature, will produce spirits from killing it. And yes, it is obsidian level, so it will allow you to mine obsidian blocks without much problem if you're using the pick. 
But enough about that, let's upgrade our crude scythe into a soul-stained steel scythe. It has slightly increased damage on both magic and physical. You can also make soul-stained steel armor, which will take quite a bit of spirits as well as different ingredients that you need to have nearby. But you're going to look pretty darn cool wearing this outfit. Or at least like you came out of a Tron movie, especially if you enchant it. Now the benefit to this set, besides just being, well, really cool looking, highly durable, and giving you a pretty decent amount of armor, it's not going to be quite as good as a diamond set, but it will otherwise be very similar. It also gives you magic resistance. An added benefit to this armor is that when you collect spirits, you gain a brief resistance effect. Now this also stacks over time, so each spirit that you collect will increase your number of resistance stacks that you'll have, increasing it further and further. Before we get too deep into this side, let's take a brief jump over to the other side where we get into arcane rocks and spirit fabric. Arcane rocks are rather simple to make with some sacred spirits and arcane spirits, a bit of cobblestone. Twisted rock is just a little bit darker and wicked spirit plus arcane spirit and cobblestone. Spirit fabric is made with earthen spirit, wicked spirit, some white wool on top of your altar, some string and hex ash on the side pedestals, and you get spirit fabric. The first thing you're probably going to want to make with it is a spirit pouch, because I'm sure at this point you're tired of collecting spirit in your inventory and it's just kind of like clogging everything up. So just make this in a crafting table and you get one of these, a spirit pouch, just by opening it up you can put all of your spirits in there. Nothing else will go in. I'm trying to place it in there. Nothing's happening. The benefit of this, besides just storing all of these in one space, because there are eight different kinds, is that if you kill a mob, its spirits crystals that you collect will automatically go into the pouch. So these numbers will increase in there instead of your inventory. Now besides that, spirit fabric can be used for making soul hunter cloaks. At this point, you should have the idea on how to make some of these things with your altar, so I'm not going to go over all these recipes. But taking all four of these different pieces, you can get yourself a soul hunter set of armor, which just makes you look kind of like a little bit of a mage ninja, I guess. I don't know, but it, it still makes you look really cool. Now this is at the sacrifice of a bit of armor. Is it, You're a little bit less than you would be with the soul stained steel set, but you're going to have benefits on your scythe proficiency and magic proficiency. So you're going to be doing a bit more damage than you normally would with your scythe than if you were wearing other armor sets, provided it's a scythe that you're using because you're gaining one scythe proficiency per piece of armor. Back into our encyclopedia, let's go back to the other side where we've got all these trinkets. Now that we've covered your different armors and tools, how about something to kind of buff anything and everything that you could possibly think of? Well, we've got plenty to choose from. If you have the Curios mod installed, you can click here and you'll have several different slots available to you. Now you're probably going to be making your most basic stuff to start with, and that's gilded rings and ornate rings. And these are made with very simple recipes, but they still have really good benefits on their own. Ornate rings gives two armor toughness, and gilded rings gives two armor. There's also a gilded belt, which gives four armor. So if you put on gilded belt, couple gilded rings, and let's say instead of an ornate ring, we go with an ornate necklace, we get four armor toughness from that one. We have just increased our armor toughness by four and our armor by an additional eight, which is pretty darn good, even for spooky scythe ninjas. Now, these are just the mundane options. These aren't even the special ones. You have plenty to choose from in this selection. I won't be going over every single one of them. That's for you to decide. They just have different recipes and effects. But I will tell you some of the ones that I'm having fun with, and that's like the Ring of Curative Talent. Will give you healing benefits upon collecting spirits or killing mobs. The Warded Belt, which just gives you a really good smattering of everything. Knockback resistance, armor, armor toughness, and magic resistance. The Ring of Wicked Intent, which upon collecting spirits also gives you a strength bonus that stacks similar to the resistance bonus you got from your Soul Stained Steel armor. And the Necklace of the Mystic Mirror, which kind of adds specific damage buffs and bonuses. So by the time you're done, you're pretty much a powerhouse and can just kill things much easier and quicker than you could before. Plus you're going to be getting some extra benefits of strength and or regeneration. And these are just some of the examples. There's plenty more in here and plenty more to come, as this mod is still under development. Going back over to the far right side, we're coming to the tail end of this stuff. 
and that's going to be starting off with a bit of ether for decoration. Ether is really pretty light sources and when I boil it down to the most simple and basic stuff. It does require a few ingredients in order to make it, but you do get two and you can turn them into several torches, or you can turn them into little braziers, or if you want to take it a step further, you can actually make iridescent ether, and this requires a few more rarer items for an even more brilliant and beautiful light to choose from in the same style of braziers as well. If you're curious what they look like, here is your regular one, and this is going to be your iridescent style where you've got two tones going on inside of it, and it's really lovely either way you look at it. It's a very well lit and pretty mod in general. And then we come into the last section, and that is going to be the alchemy. By making a spirit crucible, as seen here with some arcane spirits and so on, as well as an alchemical impetus, you are well on your way to starting into alchemy. And as a brief side note, if your impetus does get broken or cracked, you can repair it. If you look at all of these different uh, options here around the spirit alchemy icon in the center, you'll see that they have a slightly different icon for when they show the instructions on how to use them with some sort of impetus on top of it. This is your spirit crucible instead of your altar. The easiest way to tell it apart is that it's a plus sign instead of the X of the other one. The idea here is that you take some sort of impetus, in this case I'll take the alchemical one, put it in place, then I'll add infernal spirit to it, and over time it will produce some sort of outcome. I have glowstone dust. I clicked several of these infernal spirits on here, so it's going to continue processing with this impetus on here and those spirits until they're exhausted or it cracks. Either way, it's a really good way of duplicating and making mass amounts of your different materials that you might be in need of. Whether it be nether quartz, blazing quartz, prismarine shards, prismarine crystals, iron, gold, copper, gunpowder, glowstone, redstone, enderpearls, gas tears, or rabbit's foot. Now on top of that, there's one more lonely one down here you might notice, and that's the ceaseless impetus. This allows you to take your alchemical impetus, upgrade it into the ceaseless impetus using a totem of undying as well as several other ingredients, and making it slightly renewable. Having a ceaseless impetus in my hand, I can jump off and die and use it just like I would a totem of undying. And you'll notice it actually has a durability of two. Don't forget, once cracked, it can be repaired. So it's a renewable version with only needing one totem of undying to start with. From the center here, if you scroll up a bit further, you'll notice that there are a couple more items. And that's the Turving, which is a converted soul stained steel sword that then does extra damage based on the number of spirits that are dropped from an entity, as well as a Magebane belt which then redirects some magic damage and protects you a bit better from magic damage. There's also other options that are not quite yet implemented that are soon to be coming, so keep an eye on this mod. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and come visit us on Twitch. Don't be afraid to click that notification bell, and I'll see you guys next time.